Hey guys, RC here, back with Bullbound College Football, Episode 4, Season 1 of our Journeyman. We're with our first team, the Raging Cajuns of Louisiana Lafayette, and we are off to a bad start, 0-3. Uh, not losing sleep here, you gotta remember, we're a very low-prestige team, and these were all early out-of-conference games. Most, you know... If you've watched any college football, you've probably heard the term cupcake. You know, there's a saying in poker. If you look around the table and you don't know who the sucker is, it's you. If you're looking around your schedule and you don't know who the cupcake is, it's you. And so we're the cupcake here. Uh, and so being 0-3 doesn't surprise me. Uh, I've gone in, you can see I've already been through my checklist and I've made, I've already made some changes. Uh, but, uh, Hey, let's get into it. Please don't forget, subscribe. If you're new, hit that like button, just smash the living hell out of it. That's the only thing I ask you guys to do to support the channel. More likes equals better algorithm for YouTube possibility for more people to see what the hell I'm doing here on this little channel. And I thank you in advance for doing that. Uh, also, daily content going up on my channel. Please hit that notification bell so you stay up to date every day when I put up a new video, except on Sundays. On that day, I do a lot of rendering and uploading. Uh, as you can see, we have already gone through the checklist. Let's go ahead and sim out the game. Uh, week four, we are on the road against Florida International. Now, this is a league opponent. They're in the Sun Belt as well. And you notice they're 0-3. In fact, let's go look at the standings for the Sun Belt. Three teams have won one game out of their first three. So we're not, we're not any worse off than anybody else. All right. So we're playing Florida Atlantic. We rank... Uh, no, we're not. We're playing Florida International. Get with the program. Uh, we rank 79th in offense. They rank 103rd in defense. Advantage, Cajuns. They rank 118th in offense, and we rank 78th in defense. Advantage, us. But they're six-point favorites. They're favored to win by a touchdown. Doesn't make all the sense in the world. We can look at the preview, and it'll tell you. Offensively, we are favored. Defensively, we are favored. Um, but they're favored overall just because. Uh, there's no... <laughs> the, the, the Sharks in Vegas know something, and that has me worried. All right, well, let's simulate the week. And we lose 14-10. to 10. We scored the first 10 points. Led 10-0 at the half and then gave up 14 points in the second half. Let's take a look at the box score and see how it shook out. 14-17 to 17 on first downs. We actually did 6 of 18 on third downs, so that was a little bit of improvement. We outgained them by 126 yards. We had a lot more rushing, 10 more yards passing. We were only 11 of 28. They were 20 of 36. We actually had eight and a half yards of pass. We were sacked seven times, so that doesn't help us. Three interceptions and two lost fumbles from four total fumbles. Taking a look at the quarterbacks, Williams went three of five, sacked four times. Faust, eight of 23. That's only about 30%. Scott, 16 of 90. Miller, 3 for 71. And Faust had 10 carries for 60 yards in this one. Six yards a carry. All those are pretty good. Uh, 14 throws two, towards Owens. He caught five of them, dropped two. So out of the 14, seven were somewhere that he could have or should have caught them. That means the other seven were overthrown, underthrown, just out of his reach not his fault. So there is that. That's disappointing. All right. Well, we're going to go in and continue to make tweaks. And the way, here's the way I look at this game. First season, I don't care. I'm just trying to get to recruiting to get better players. And then next season's when the real, real concern starts. I'm not looking to switch jobs for next year. So, you know, even though it's a journeyman, we got to actually win and do well to get attention from people. 
So we won't get any job offers next year. All right, so let's go in. Actually, if we go to team info, we're off on week five. So what I'm looking for in here is the ability to add hours. We don't have any. So I'm going to go ahead and plow through this week and move on to next week. Don't just bypass every week that you don't play because there may be something important in your checklist that you need to do. Okay. Another thing with this game, it can be a little finicky. So I'm going to, I, I'm going to, I usually save my league, if not every week, at least every other week. That way, if there is a crash, at least I've taken care of it. All right, let's jump into the standings real quick. So you can do, see that half the, you know, several teams have now won one game. That's conference wise. Uh, so Troy and Florida Atlantic have played two conference games. Uh, but overall, it's still only two wins. Now you may be if you're not an American football fan, if you if you're a Europe if you're a European football, you may be looking at this and going, why does that look weird? You have your overall record and then you have your conference record. Picture the best way I can explain it is picture a Premier League club. Liverpool, Arsenal, whoever, they play Premier League matches, right? But then they're going to play FA Cup, Champions League, Euro Cup, whatever. Whether they win or lose those cup matches does not affect their place in the table in the Premier League. Even if they played a cup match against another Premier League side, if Liverpool and Arsenal or Tottenham and Chelsea face off, the loser or winner, that doesn't help them in the Premier League table. Same concept here. Your overall record is, is what you are ranked on, uh, makes you eligible for bowl games, but it's your conference record that determines who wins the conference. So... How is that important? Every conference has what they call a bowl tie-in. Uh, very similar, going back to the football manager analogy. So we know in the Premier League, for example, the top four clubs go to Champions League, right? And then the fifth and sixth place and potentially seventh place uh, go to Euro Cup. Same thing here. In the lower conferences, you only have one tie-in. So the winner of the Sun Belt will go to a bowl game, even if they only have, say, four wins. Now, you're not going to win the conference with four wins, but my point being is only your conference record determines your conference championship. And the conference champion, irregardless of their overall record, so... Somebody could go say six and zero, oh, but be six and seven, or no, six and six overall. And you could have another team that wins several of those out of conference games, and maybe seven and five, but all five of their losses are in conference, and then they would they wouldn't finish first, or you know, just on principle. So just something to think about. All right. So let's dig in and make a few tweaks. And I also want to show you something I changed last week. So injury report, we'll look at that. Study hall, so this is another study hall week. Academic eligibility, so our starting receiver, Owens, has now been uh, suspended. Uh, Street is su still suspended, so the tutoring didn't help him. And now Downing is also suspended. Uh, we've got two receivers and a kicker. This is not something I, now, first, when you're looking at this, without even clicking on this, I will tell you the kicker is the highest ranked player, and I just know that from experience. And if we look, Emery is number 1635, Velasquez is 1576, and McMahon is 1524. It's just the order they put them. I normally wouldn't bring a kicker or a punter in for a visit, but when you're a really poor team, sometimes three points can win or lose a game. 
So I'm going to bring the kicker in this week. As odd as that may seem, you don't have to do that. All right, so Scott has fully recovered from his injury. So now we've had two visits. All right, we're going back into study hall. Now, you remember we started with 80, and we ended up with like 18 left. But look, we're down to five. Why did that happen? Remember I told you, when we set for the game to control academics, your assistant coach will put hours on players that he wants to. So I really don't want to use hours for any of these guys, but Owens, I need back. So I'm going to put all five hours on him. And now I don't have any more. Remember, I can't go below zero. I could show you and prove it to you, but I'm just going to ask that you trust me. You can try it yourself if you think I'm pulling wool over your eyes. Uh, but so we're down to zero. Now here's what's cool. We'll come back the next time there's a that we can put hours, and that'll be a negative number because the game will use more. So that's that tip I gave you last episode. If you missed last episode, you might want to go back right now and watch it for the tip and then come back and finish this one. All right, team depth chart. All right, just kind of moving guys through here. I am going to, you know, let's see. Let's look at the ratings here. Williams has a little bit stronger arm, more accurate, less touch. You know what? I'm going to take a gamble, and we're going to go with Williams. He just has, right now, he has better stats completion-wise. Now, he doesn't have any touchdowns, which sucks, but he also has the most upside, and he's a sophomore. So we kind of need him to play in order to try to develop him. Now, back in episode one, when we looked at our coaching staff, they had a development trait. Just because you have a guy that can develop doesn't mean he will. You have bust in real life. There are busts replicated in the game. They are relatively rare. You won't have a ton of them, but you also won't have people get maxed out just because. If you if I have I could have you know a hundred guys that are three slash ten, but if my coaches can't develop them, if their development skill is extremely low, they may top out at five slash ten, four slash ten. None of them will reach ten slash ten. So something to think about. Put a little more money into coaching is my philosophy. But we're gonna go with Williams. Let's save that. We're going to give Williams the start today. All right. Now, I want to tweak this. I tweaked this a little bit. We went with passing. In the first episode or two, you saw me take away my long passing because I don't really have anybody with arm strength and accuracy, which are the two major components to, to throw the deep ball. I want to go with a short passing attack. So let me go through here. All right, I have finished this. So you can see here what I've done is I have tweaked all my numbers to be more predominantly short passing. Now, I still have some running plays, you know, good balance, but my passing side is heavily weighted to the short pass. Uh, in fact, I would like I'm going to even change that. Let's go 55-25, 55-25 there as well. Um, so now we're going to go into our strategy. Now, remember, uh, I'm also using the playbook. So what I like about the playbook, even if you use the strategies, it's a good idea to go into this screen and kind of look at it, right? Uh, because it gives you every play in the game. Now, it's sorted by each type of play. So there are five types, inside and outside runs, short, medium, and long passes, just like we saw on that previous screen. Now, again, it gives you your blues, your reds. Those are your uh, bonuses, penalties, and neither, just av you know, average. So what we can do is we can click on this play. And it'll tell you who your primary player is. And then you can look and see the results. So on this particular play, 
in the games that, and even if you're not using the playbook, it's still calling these plays. So when you go in, you'll see if you're not using this, if you're using strategies, you can still come in here and see what plays the game is calling. But on this, what I like is now I can see in the four games we played, we've run this play seven times, and he's averaging 7.3 yards a carry with one big play of over nine yards. Now, we haven't scored any touchdowns. That's a drawback. But you can see I'm heavily weighted 15% to that. On this one, six times we've run this play, averaging 2.83. Now, I don't typically make... I use the first three non-conference games to kind of evaluate when I'm when I'm using a playbook or even strategies to see what's working for us. Where are we as a team having success? Right. So what I but at this point of the season now, especially if I would have been using the playbook all along and it was using only my plays, now I could sit here and go, you know, anything below three I view as a as a bad play, even though we're getting a bonus. This cutback just isn't working, so I'm going to get rid of it. And this one's actually working fine, so I'm going to raise it to 20%. And then we'll go here. Well, they've only run that one time. I'm not going to make a decision just on one play. Five carries, six yards. I'm going to say that one's not working. Two yards on six tries. That's not working. That one's working, right? So let's now that's a quarterback run. He's got decent durability, but I don't want to overwork my quarterback. So let's raise that, but only to 15. 375. I kind of use four or five, depending on how good of a team I am. At this level, I would say four is a success at a higher prestige team in Alabama. Five would be a success. Um, so on this one, I'm going to keep it for now. Unless I see something else. This is going to be one I'll keep. I've got 10 points available if I need it, right? That one I'm going to say is a bust. I'm going to keep that one. Not that it's a great play, but again, the quarterback, he could break one here. Um, probably not the way it's looking. That'll be one I'll get rid of at some point. And because I only had this one at 5, I'm going to put it to 10. Basically, 100%. If you do 10 plays, 10% 10 each, there's your 100%. So you can evaluate 10 plays at a time and then start to tweak from there. That's kind of my rule of thumb. Now, all of your once you've gone into your playbook and gone through all your plays, only the ones that have a number are going to be at the very top. So I have 25 points left to play with. So let's kind of go down and just see if there's any other plays that get my attention. Kind of like that. That's an I formation with a lead blocker. I don't I'm not a I'm not a big fan of of cut of uh cutbacks, but depends on your offensive line. My offensive line is pretty weak. So I'm going to say no. We do have that quarterback sneak out of this formation. Remember that? That's the one 15% Let's give it to our running back there because he is a good running back. And let's go with another run here. Well, and we can't do that because we've got 105. So let's do that. So we've, at, we've taken out a few running plays. We've added in a few new ones. And we've raised the valuation on a couple that are showing potential uh, success. Vince Lombardi had a, you know, his one play was the was the lead, you know, the the pulling guard uh, off tackle. Both guards pulled, and their players always said they ran that play a hundred times every practice. And when asked why, he said, "If we can perfect this, nobody can stop it." And they won the first two Super Bowls. So, obviously, and they named the Super Bowl trophy after him. Obviously, knew what he was doing. Now, now we're moving to the outside run. I'm kind of remembering the numbers that we were looking at on the average yards per uh, your yards per carry. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm also evaluating: Are we having more success with the inside run or the outside run? So an inside run is somewhere between the tackles. Outside run is typically 
off tackle to the outsides. So it could be anywhere from here out. Well, the first thing I notice here, we've got 10 yards of carry on six carries. Well, I like that one. Anything over 10, I'm automatically bumping up to 20%. Six works for me. Seven works for me. I'd like that to be at 15%. 3.8, I'm going to get rid of it because it's below four. Five is average. I've only got one attempt there. I'm going to get rid of that one. Uh, yeah, one play for 64 yards. I'm not going to go gung-ho yet. Now, this one I'm averaging four, and I only had five points in it. So let's make that a 10. And we've had three there, so I'm going to zero that out. Normally, I'd wait till I had between six and 10 plays before I cut one. But I want to come back up here. Where was that one play? Right there. Um, yeah, please. I'm going to go 15% in that one. And I'm going to go to 20% on that one. I had such good success here. Now, I'm going to save this. Now, before I finish, I'm going back into my offensive game plan. Where are we having the most success on the running, outside run? And it tells me that here, 5.5 yards compared to 3.9. So you know what I'm going to do? I'll drop this to 10. I'm going to raise that to 20. I'm going to drop this to 15. I'm going to raise that to 20. I'm going to drop this to 20. I'm going to raise that to 30. I'm going to raise that to 40. I'm going to go 20, 35, 30. I'm just using numbers. There's no rhyme or reason here. But what I want to do is I want my running particularly to be more outside geared. That's that's the goal here. Now, I don't want a super high number because I still want to be predominantly short passing, but I'm going to go ahead and we're going to raise that to 35, that to 35. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go 15 here and we'll drop this medium to 20. Same thing here. This one will do 10 and 20 and 20, actually, yeah, 20 and 20 there. All right, and save those changes. All right, so now we've tweaked our game plan again. We've saved it. So now we are not only a short passing team, but we're more geared to the outside run when we're running and that's all just because of what i just looked at in my playbook and what i'm seeing as our success level we're we're better at the outside and that stands to reason our our tackles are better tight end is a blocking tight end he's out there so it makes sense that we're better on the outside than with this center and guard that are red that are weaker and we could go in and look at we can go in and look at our, our stats. Let's see, ratings, offensive skills. Yep, right there. All right, so let's go in and look at our offensive line. All right, first off, tight end. Well, run blocking. Moreno's the best run blocker, but he's injured, you see. Strained MCL. But more importantly, RB is run block, PB is pass block. So you can see we're a better run blocking team. So I might actually want to go and become an outside running team, which I could still tweak to at some point if the quarterback situation doesn't develop. So there's our tackle, our guards, run blocking, much better. And you, But you can see below 50 is, is that's why Jackson is red just not very good. My hope is as we progress in seasons, this will get faster and faster. But again, I'm seeing stuff here that I want you guys to know about. So I'm trying to show you what I can. Uh, then we need to go to the outside run. Uh, I'm sorry. No, we already did the outside run. Short passes. And again, you see I've got 10 plays, 10%. Now I can kind of go through. 
Anything below 60%, I really don't like. Now, at a lower team like this, I might go 50%, but a 30, that's gone. That's gone. Even though that's a screen pass, and you can, you know, I can usually tear it up with a screen pass. That's not bad. 75% and 13 yards a carry. Let's go ahead and you see that's a negative play, but it still works for our team. I'm going to go ahead and bump that 5%. 50%, but only a half yard. We've only got two passes, though, so let's kind of keep going with that. 66 and 18, I like that. Let's bump that to 15. And we'll keep that at 10 for right now. And the reason I'm not bumping that is I'm at 90, so I want one more that I can put in. Now, this one we were at 50%, but a big play. So, th again, this is one was not in my playbook, right? But you can see that it had plays called. So, earlier in the... But I mentioned that the AI will still call. So, you may be asking yourself, how does this have six plays, but it wasn't one of the plays you had picked? We talked about that when we were going with the strategy rather than the playbook... The strategies can use the entire playbook, whereas if you go with the playbook, it will limit itself to just those plays. So this play was actually called in those first three games and has had some success. So we're going to go ahead and bump that one back into the playbook. That one's still looking good. 57 I can live with, especially on a medium pass. Pretty much anything over 50. On a medium, you got to remember you're thro throwing farther down the field. <clears throat> now, only 40%, but 7.9 and one big play. We've only got 5% allocated there. We're going to go ahead and keep it for now. Now, remember, in our initial game plan, we had long passes set to zero. So I don't care what these are. No, I don't care at all. Uh, and then defensive strategies. Now, the defensive playbook, you do the same way. It'll list all the defensive plays in the game, and you can really dial in if you want to. I have never done that since 2005 when this game released. It, uh, and we want to go strategies. All right, just making sure we've checkmarked everything. Yeah. And Sim Weekly game, we are at home. Four-point underdogs to Middle Tennessee State, who are two and three. If we look at the preview, they're the over. They're favored in the game. They have the better offense. We have the slightly better defense, although we got plus two. They are the better on special teams, and they say the key matchup is their running back against our front seven. We're allowing 144 yards a game. Now he's got 569 yards. Maybe. Maybe I want to go back into my defensive game plan and I want to make that a run. And that way we're focusing slightly more towards targeting the run on this guy. We'll do that. We'll simulate the week and middle linebacker. All right. Well, I thought I did that. But again, sometimes I do the offense and I forget. Middle linebacker is the insert right here. Okay. It looks right, but maybe it wasn't when I clicked on it. Always try to go three deep at all your positions. You may have noticed on the defense there, the 4-3 uh, linebacker uh, or 4-3 nose guard was uh, only two. We're playing a 3-4, so. And not bad, 24-20 to 20 loss. Let's take a look at the box score. So we scored, we outscored them 10-7, gave up 10 unanswered points. Then we outscored them 10-7 again, and nobody scored. So we were competitive. Uh, 16 to 14 first downs. 60 yards less of offense. Only 66 yards rushing today. So we only gained 1.7 per run. And you may go, well, we just looked and saw that we were a better outside running team. Doesn't mean you're going to be successful. They could have geared up to stop the outside run. Who, nobody, you know, there's no telling. Uh, passing, we had more passing yards. Good news is we were 15 of 38, so that's around 40%-ish. 
No interceptions. That's an improvement. Um, how many fumbles? Only one fumble today. They had five, and we recovered three of them. So if I looked at all this and said, okay, time of possession is even. Red zone, we were both two for two. We had the turnover margin. We could have won this game. You know, we could have won this game. I think where it let us down, we were 5 of 20 on third down. They were 6 of 16, and we just didn't gain as many yards. Now, Williams, 13 of 29, 2 of 9 for Faust. Williams had two touchdowns. And I think what I've determined from today is Williams is going to be my quarterback. So I'm going to make him number one, which I've already done, but I'm going to go 100% with him moving forward. Um now, what I do need to do, you notice Williams is nine carries for 11 yards. Faust was seven for 50. What I might want to do is make Faust my short yardage quarterback, and have, maybe he'll be run, doing those running plays on short yardage rather than third, third down or anything like that. And what am I talking about? Let's take a quick look. So here we have our quarterback. And our short yardage quarterback. So what he, what we're going to do here is we want our main quarterback to be in a hundred percent of the time, and our short yardage quarterback to be in a hundred percent of the time. But then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the depth charts. And we're going to have Williams as our regular quarterback here, and then our short yardage quarterback. We're going to put Faust in there. So. Short yardage is basically anything three yards or less. So that's when Faust will come in. And what I'm going to do is then I'm going to go in on strategy. I can go in here. I'm not strategy on a uh, game plan. And I can tweak this a little bit more uh, for running. But I can also take out the quarterback plays on the playbook or I can reduce the numbers here so like I wouldn't want Williams running this so I'm going to drop it to five on both of these and then that way there's less runs available to the quarterback spot just something to think about all right, well, let me get through here. We'll figure out how we're going to allocate the rest of these points to make that tweak for next episode. We're 0-5, guys, 0-2 in the conference. Uh, it's pucker time to be bowl eligible. But again, first year, I'm not too, I'm not worried. We can have a losing season. We're not going to be, you know, we're not in the running for a national title. We're not in the run for a New Year's Day bowl game. What I'm, you know, right now, it's, just figuring out how to work with this team, getting to recruiting, and hopefully not doing so bad that we mess up our recruiting options for this year. But remember, we're a 30 prestige team at the end of the day. It's going to be the bottom of the barrel that's going to be interested in coming to us at all. So recruiting's where this, you know, this is a recruiting game more than a, you know, simulation game. So, you know, that's what we're looking for here is to get to recruiting, get players in that can make us better, and then look for next year and the year after. So that's where we're at. Hit the like button. Give me a pity like, if nothing else, for losing two more games today. Uh, but hopefully you learned a little bit on the playbook and some of the things that we looked at today. And again, we'll try to speed this up as we progress. But as I'm talking about new things here in the first season, just want to make sure you guys understand it and that I'm answering questions that I've seen posed. And, you know, that way, as we move forward, you'll understand why maybe I do some things that I do, you know. But anyway, we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.